Thank you very much. And what I'm going to speak to you about at the moment is management systems for a large river basin, uh, the large river basin that you're in, the Danube River Basin. The issues uh, related to the Danube are ones that have to involve putting the science together in, as I say, a large river basin, a river basin that begins in the Black Forest of Germany and ends in the Black Sea, uh, where the Danube enters into the Black Sea between Ukraine, Romania, and the Danube Delta, which is one of the world's, or is the world's largest reed bed, and a, a remarkable physical habitat. The Danube itself is very diverse, diverse in terms of geography, but as you've heard from Professor Dimkic earlier today, very diverse in terms of the socioeconomic circumstances of the countries. Like all rivers of Europe, the Danube has been historically damaged. It's been damaged through adding of pollutants uh, to the river system, uh, synthetic organic pollutants in some cases, as well as traditional nutrients from uh, human wastes. Uh, additionally, we have altered the river in terms of its uh, natural structure, straightening it, uh, putting concrete on its banks to to allow for navigation or building of hydropower plants, and through a variety of industrial uh, accidents that have occurred through industrial uh, production that have in one way or another contaminated the waters. All of these factors have been at play in the Danube River Basin for hundreds of years, and the river itself has suffered as, as many others have uh, in this region. The countries of the Danube recognized that uh, water needed to be managed as a whole though, and with the fall of the Iron Curtain at the end of the 1980s, it allowed for cooperation in this region that was not possible uh, to the extent that it should have existed prior to that point. This region was politically separated. There were two political systems, two political systems that prevented the kind of cooperation that is necessary in managing a transboundary river system. We are very fortunate, though, that the people involved in the water management sector recognized that they had to work together and that water was the unifying element, bringing people together in the Danube River Basin. You see here a picture of the, the Danube system. And the Danube is not just the Danube. It's a host of tributaries, uh, such as the Sava, which uh, has its confluence here in in Belgrade, and uh, although I live in the city of Vienna, I consider this perhaps the most beautiful location on the Danube where the confluence of the Sava enters into the Danube River Basin. We have other major tributaries that involve uh, a multitude of countries, five countries of the Tisa River Basin, a variety of other smaller rivers that make up this network of rivers that are part of the Danube system. And it is important to understand that a river basin such as the Danube is a river basin and the water sources are connected and are, in the case of the surface water, connecting the countries of the Danube in a ways that are not, uh, other, would not otherwise be, be so. Recognizing that they had to work together, the countries got together and developed a international convention that committed them to cooperating with one another in managing the water resources of the, the river basin. They signed the Danube River Protection Convention in June of 1994. And as I say, it was countries' commitments. Each country committed to undertake actions in support of sustainable water use and use of both surface water and groundwaters in the Danube River Basin. Although I can quite honestly say that uh, groundwater has been a bit of a, a stepchild in the whole process. And uh, I'm very fortunate, uh, or very fortunate that uh, Serbia here, uh, and particularly the Yaroslav Czerny Institute with a conference that they organized, helped bring groundwaters much more in the focus of the work of the commission that I'm responsible for, and I think help recognize or bring recognition to the importance of groundwater. Nonetheless, as it is embedded in the convention, it is specified there, but did not get the kind of attention that it probably should have up until recently. We have as well the reduction of uh, nutrients and hazardous substances that are affecting the water system as a commitment that the countries are making, that they will do that. 
both for the countries of the Danube, but also for the influence that the Danube has on the Black Sea, a sea which is affected by the waters of the Danube and is the major uh, recipient of the uh, freshwater system of the Danube. We also have the responsibility for floods and uh, ice hazards, which uh, until last winter were not very relevant for a number of years, but last winter showed that ice hazards can and, and are still a significant uh, issue that has to be managed collectively in the Danube River Basin. We also have had the legal basis of the Danube River Con Protection Convention reinforced with another legal mechanism that is applicable and a legal requirement for EU member states, and that is the EU Water Framework Directive and now the EU Floods Directive. Both of those pieces of legislation have been adopted by all Danube countries as a basis for the way in which we are going to undertake our management activities. And it provides a reinforcement of the legal mechanisms that exist under the Convention and a, I would say, methodologies for how to go about maintaining and improving the water quality of the Danube River Basin and managing the water resources. Countries such as Serbia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Moldova, Ukraine don't have the legal obligation to use those mechanisms, but have agreed in the framework of our convention to do so. And it is really, I think, a, a compliment to those countries that they have done so and seen the benefits of adopting on a voluntary basis those mechanisms as a way of organizing water management. The Danube has officially 19 countries that are within the territory of the Danube River Basin, but four, or sorry, five of those have territories less than 2,000 square kilometers and are not contracting parties to the convention. The 14 main countries of the Danube River Basin are contracting parties, which means they've signed the convention, they've ratified the convention, and are cooperating together in the frame of the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River for managing water resources in the Danube River Basin. Very, very important is that the convention is a commitment of countries, a commitment that is reinforced through the active involvement of people from each of those countries in the work groups of the commission. These, this is an organigram of the work group structure of our commission which identifies the different specific working group activities that take place where each country is represented, have experts participating in that work. And I see in this room a number of the representatives from Serbia who are participating in these groups and actively cooperating with their colleagues from the other parts of the Danube River Basin in developing cooperation arrangements, mechanisms for jointly managing the water resources of the Danube River Basin. The countries are doing that not just on their own, however. They're doing it with a number of other institutions who have brought very important technical assistance and uh, intellectual support to the work that has been ongoing including um, the IHP uh, network that has contributed significantly to the activities of the ICPDR, the water balance that was done for this region coming from IHP. We have as well uh, non-governmental organizations, WWF or the Danube Environment Forum, that are also part of our working group activities and contribute significantly as well as a number of um, other governmental institutions such as the Black Sea Commission or the Ramsar Convention, which also has brought um, efforts to, or their work within our structures and ensured that the coordination happens between our own activities and those of other international agreements. This network of uh, countries and people associated with each of the countries and these institutions are the basis under which the coordination and the, the joint management of waters of the Danube River system are happening. I was asked uh, yesterday when I uh, met Professor Lee about the who controls the system of the Danube. There is not a control mechanism. What there is is a forum for cooperation that has existed. And that is involving, as I say, the commitments and the active involvement of the people of the countries, plus other institutions that are supporting that work. We unfortunately have a situation in the Danube where the waters are not returned to their pristine condition or restored to the kind of quality that they should be. 
We have, though, developed a system of analyzing both the water from a chemistry point of view and an ecological or biological point of view. And that is the basis under which the Water Framework Directive guides us in terms of the measures that we need to take in restoring the water. And one of the goals of the Water Framework Directive is to restore the waters of the Danube to good condition by the year 2015. Good chemical, ecological, biological condition. We've identified significant issues that are prohibiting us from reaching that goal of good status. And those are organic pollution, nutrient pollution, hazardous substances, and what is a bit, uh, I would say, more recent uh, understanding is that the rivers are living systems and they need to be treated as such. And the morphology, the structure of river systems has to be maintained and, and supported in terms of being able to provide the, the benefits that water provides to the people of the Danube River Basin. We have undertaken an active program to assess the situation, and I showed you the graph of how we were doing related to both the chemical and ecological situation, and to understand what measures or what actions need to be taken to address the problems that exist. We've produced the, what's called the Danube River Basin Management Plan, which is a, a requirement under the Water Framework Directive of a planning process to determine the status of the waters and identify those factors that are causing uh, problems with the water and identify those measures that are to be taken to reduce that pressure on the water system. That has been done involving the cooperative efforts of all the countries for the Danube River Basin and supports the national activities that have been undertaken. And one of the guiding principles of our work is that the framework exists of managing the system on a basin-wide level, but the actual mechanisms of implementation have to be done at a national or, or uh, even lower level. I will very quickly go through the, the issues. I um, have a few slides here that identify the measures that have been identified. They are measures that are required to address these particular problems. The, the reduction of the uh, nutrient pollution in the Danube River Basin that comes about through one of the legislative measures, the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive for EU member states, which now number eight within the Danube River Basin, but are also uh, the mechanisms for reduction of, of organic pollution through improving the network of wastewater treatment plants is happening in the countries uh, outside the borders of the EU the um, Pollution Prevention Control Directive. These mechanisms are legal mechanisms that are being put in place to reduce the organic pollution. Uh, and as you saw in the slide that uh, Professor Dimkic pro provided you this morning, this is the picture of the communities larger than 2,000 square, or 2,000 population equivalents in the Danube River Basin where the blue dots represent the most advanced wastewater treatment, the red, um, very simple, um, the screening processes that exist. This picture will change based on the commitments that the countries have made by the year 2015 to look like this. And it is the hope in the next cycle of the Water Framework Directive by 2021 and 2027, the six year cycles that we have, that this whole basin will be blue Countries such as Serbia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Moldova are progressing with their wastewater treatment plant networks, but clearly not at the pace of EU member states where additional funding has been provided through the mechanisms of the European Union. The nutrient pollution has also benefited from this commitment to wastewater treatment, the implementation of that directive. As well, though, we've recognized that managing the land itself and the agricultural community has a very important role to play in how the resources on the land are managed to minimize the impact on waters, the reduction of diffuse, diffuse pollutants. And we've had what we would consider very simple measures that have been put in place, the reduction of phosphates in detergents, uh, both laundry detergents and dishwater detergents, limitations that are now in place and in large part, you can say on the basis of the science that was done in the Danube River Basin to show that that phosphorus was having a negative influence on both the Danube and its tributaries and the Black Sea. Hazardous substances pollution is an issue that we are confronted with in specific localities where historical problems have existed or in, in current situations where they are being used significantly. 
And there are again a number of legislative measures to reduce those um, uh, problems and a number of uh, priority efforts to address particular sectors such as the mining sector. Agricultural community is one of those where significant efforts are needed and there are best environmental practices being put in place and we hope through the reform of the uh, common agricultural policy that new measures will be put in place that will eliminate some of the problems that are coming about from the agricultural sector. And I've mentioned the final sector that we're dealing with is hydromorphological alterations, this changes to the river system, where efforts are underway to restore the naturalness of the river systems, the reconnection of floodplains and wetlands that are an important part of the water cycle and the water system, that we have um, the guidelines for inland navigation, which I'll talk a little bit about further, that we understand that the hydropower sector needs guidance on how it can develop hydropower and not damage the system or not as significantly damage the system as historically been the case and in particular how we can restore the longitudinal and latitudinal connectivity for water systems that are needed. An important part of that is, the, or the important motivation for that is the restoration of the natural migration paths for various fish species such as the beluga sturgeon you see here which used to get up to about six meters in length and swim upstream as far as the city that I uh, live in, Vienna, and now is, uh, is very restricted in its distribution to the last uh, 850 kilometers of the Danube and also its numbers through overfishing, uh, through pollution and through blockages as a result of the um, hindrances that exist. A significant number of efforts are underway to restore the migration pathways on the Danube and its tributaries and these are important in terms of restoring the Danube to the kind of condition that it needs to be in. This whole management system is founded on the understanding that there has to be an information system that tells us what's happening and what we need to do. We have a um, very important tool in that regard, the Transnational Monitoring Network, which is a, a network of monitoring stations that is not managed by the ICPDR, but is coordinated in terms of the results from the individual stations of each of the countries. That monitoring system provides us with a regular view of the quality of the waters, and I can very happily say that the efforts that have been taken in this region over the last 15 years have been improving the quality of the waters. And again, uh, Professor Dimkic showed you some of the improvements that have taken place in the Serbian uh, waters along the Danube earlier today. But this network provides us the basis to know what we're doing, to know what we still need to do, and to keep track of the situation. And a point that I would like to, to make here, but I'll come back to it again, is that science has to be the basis under which we make management decisions, but good science alone won't lead to good management decisions without the kind of framework of management that exists in the Danube River Basin. We've also been supported uh, with efforts that have taken place on a periodic um, basis for analyzing in more detail the quality of the waters. And this is uh, one of the efforts that we've undertaken is what's called the Joint Danube Survey, which is a, a set of research vessels that have traveled from the upstream reaches of the Danube to the Danube Delta, analyzing sediments, biological uh, quality elements, to determine whether the efforts we're taking are reaching the kind of uh, levels that, that we need to reach. And again, Serbia has played a very important part in this particular activity, both in terms of personnel for the survey, but also providing the ship you see there, the Argus, uh, which is the, the research vessel that is the primary laboratory for the Joint Danube Survey, which will take place again in June of 2013 on a six-year cycle of the third, the third re research survey. One of the issues that has been important in this region and is clearly one that uh, all river basins and all rivers and water systems need to worry about is historical waste materials that through accidents can be released to the system. We've had two major industrial accidents in this river basin, the Bayamara uh, toxic uh, cyanide spill in the year 2000 and then in the year 2010, October 2010, the red sludge spill from the Ica um, aluminum tailings pond in Hungary, which released the red sludge, killing immediately 10 people in the local community and contaminating one of the tributaries to the river. 
We have a system called the Accident Emergency Warning System which identified for other countries what had happened, made them aware that a toxic material had been released to the system and allowed them in the event that it was necessary to shut off water intakes and to manage the crisis that existed through this particular accident. That system is part of the cooperation arrangements that exist and a central part of, of the work that we do as a commission. We are also facilitating the work of the countries related to flood protection and providing a forum again where the countries are both developing measures jointly but also developing approaches to flood risk management uh, in a unified manner. The issue of groundwater I mentioned is one that uh, Serbia and the Yaroslav Charity Institute should be particularly proud of the role that they've played in strengthening the understanding within our commission of the need to deal with this issue. We have focused primarily on transboundary groundwater resources, uh, but it is clear that through the work that has happened here and the uh, attention to this issue, that the countries have played a, or put a much higher significance on this issue than was the case in the past. But it is clear that in a number of instances, groundwater is cross-border in its uh, um, uh, activities, or that it needs to be managed jointly. And we have a number of the examples that you see here. I will come to the conclusion by saying that the ministers of water of the Danube countries met in February of 2010 to analyze the work that had been done improving the Danube River Basin and found that we had achieved important progress, as I'd mentioned. But they also acknowledged and made very clear that the good cooperation amongst water managers wasn't going to solve the problem of water and managing water effectively if there were not good relations and discussions with other sectors that influenced water. Sectors such as the agriculture, hydropower, uh, navigation. This conference happened under the banner of uh, Danube uh, Shared Waters Joint Responsibility. The understanding that each country has the responsibility as part of the bigger system and that each country has to do their part. But it was also clear that we needed to reach out to these other sectors and to make bridges with the navigation sector, with hydropower, with agriculture, and collectively address the issue of climate change, which the new uh, UNESCO Center here will have as one of its key focuses. We have to develop climate adaption strategies to adjust to the kinds of issues that have been presented to you earlier in the presentation in this session. With respect to navigation, we've had significant success in working with the navigation community to determine how they can improve navigation on the Danube without damaging and further undermining the, nav uh, the waterway system as a natural system. They've initiated a number of very positive activities in terms of waste collection, but also in terms of how they go about their uh, management of the waterways that are maintaining or improving the ecological situation and at the same time as improving the navigation. And this cooperation has identified that water managers and other sectors who may traditionally be seen as opposing are not necessarily in opposition. We have done a similar set of activities with the agricultural community. We will have again another workshop next week where we'll speak with representatives of ministries of agriculture from the different countries of the Danube explaining to them the Danube River Basin Management Plan and the role that agriculture has. And again, work that the Yaroslav Czerny Institute has undertaken for us in the context of the Tisa River Basin has showed that agricultural demand will be one of the areas that under the climate change scenarios that exist, there will be more demand on water for agriculture and how to manage that demand given the other uh, issues that have to be addressed. Hydropower, as I mentioned, is a critical uh, issue. We have over 1,000 major blockages along the Danube and its tributary system that prevent the longitudinal connectivity of the system and finding ways to organize the energy systems that at least allow for the migration of, of fish species that I talked about earlier and the connectivity of the system to exist is a process that we are engaged in now with the organizations such as the International Hydropower Association, the European Small Hydropower Association, and ministries of energy and environment together to try to f get solutions that are going to be in all our interests. And finally, the issue of climate adaption is one that we, we have been addressing. 
Uh, we have begun uh, and had a commitment through the ministerial meeting that took place in 2010 to develop a climate adaption strategy that will be adopted at our, what we call our ordinary meeting in December of this year in Vienna. It is a strategy that's going to need the kind of science that is being um, hoped to bring, come together through the work uh, of the UNESCO Center here, that this center will focus on this issue, will hopefully continue in future, continue to provide inputs to us as an institution. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that the uh, efforts that have been taken to create a uh, UNESCO Center for Sustainable Development and Adaption to Climate Change are efforts that are significant, not just in terms of the potential north-south cooperation, as, as you heard earlier talked about, but also in creating a strength within this river basin, which Serbia is very much a part of, and creating a leadership within this region that will contribute to the cooperative efforts that are already ongoing related to water management in the context of the ICPDR. And I really would like to, to congratulate uh, Professor Dimkic and all the colleagues from Yaroslav Czerny who have been part of bringing that necessary science together that feeds into the management systems that, that I've just described to you and are the basis under which decisions can be made by water managers in the Danube River Basin. Thank you very much.